So I'm Margaret Sutherland and I'm a Professor of High Ability Studies and Inclusive Practice here at the University of Glasgow. I'm Connie, I'm Constanza, uh, I'm a student here in uh, the University of Glasgow, I'm doing my PhD in education and also I'm super interested in uh, inclusive education and curriculum and I'm from Chile. So Margaret, just to, uh, as an icebreaker, uh, do you have any favorite place to go? Maybe a lot of them? <laughs> yes, I, ha I have lots of favorite places. So I guess my favorite place in Scotland would be the Isle of Mull. Um, I went there as a child on holiday and it's, it's a beautiful island. It's beautiful white sandy beaches with turquoise blue sea. The sea's always really cold. You wouldn't well, I wouldn't go swimming, um, and the Isle of Iona, and it's, it's just a really peaceful, beautiful place. Um, and I've been privileged to travel to many countries in the world, and there's been no country that I've not liked, but I suppose two that stand out for me. One is Nova Scotia in uh, Canada, beautiful little fishing villages, beautiful lighthouses, I love lighthouses, really nice lighthouses um, and lovely people. And my other place that's um, I've got, a, a, it's got a bit of my heart I would say is Tanzania. Um, I've had the privilege of being there several times and the red dust gets under your skin and into your heart and the scenery and the animals but the people are, are just lovely too. So those would be my three favourite places. I will follow your, your example. I think I have so far my favourite place in Scotland. Um, I went to I, the Highlands, to Isle of Skye, and I was delighted to see that landscapes and that the green colour and the blue sky. Amazing place. And also I could say that uh, maybe for my memories with my family, uh, my favourite place would be Talcahuano in Chile, that's my hometown. Uh, because also I really like uh, seafood and fish. We have a little thing called empanada with seafood inside, so I will... Uh, oh, now I have <laughs> uh, But yes, that would be my two favorite places Sounds for now. <laughs> um, we would like to know more about your um, research career, maybe some little advices for the ACRs. Um, so when you look back at your first few years um, in your academic career, are there any lessons that you have learned and would like to share with, the, with, uh, with the, me in this case, I am the privileged one here, um, as an early career researcher? Oh gosh, yes. Well, as I look back, I'm, I guess I would say I've been really fortunate in the opportunities that I've had and I've tried to always be involved in things that I thought at the end of the day would make a difference. Mm -hmm. um, that, that whatever I did would have an impact eventually on young people and children in school. Um, I've never had a career plan so I don't have a career all mapped out and, you know, I'm going to be this by that and there. I've never ever done that. And, and I, for me, that has worked. I have enjoyed that flexibility and I've not had to do certain things in a certain order. I've just, as the opportunity has come up, I've taken it. Um, and the other thing I would say is um, engage with people. People are at the heart of much of my work and I think just being collegiate and collaborative with your colleagues, supporting them when things are tough, um, having fun with them as well um, and, and finding a research friend if you like. I was very fortunate that I worked with Professor Neve Stack who um, has just recently gone back to Ireland but, but we had great fun together um, in our work and our writing and we, we complemented each other. So I think, yeah, taking care of people and taking care of yourself as well mm. and taking opportunities as they come your way. And what's your opinion about, because now we have social media, we have a lot of different um, ways to connect each other. So what do you think about networks and taking account that they are, what are you saying before, like uh, it's important to collaborate with each other, 
uh, what would be your advice uh, for because PhD uh, journey could be very alone, very insulate. A, a PhD journey is certainly a very lonely journey sometimes. I think, and I guess as a as an academic, it can be lonely too. Um, I think your generation is going to be way better at connecting online and remotely and virtually than my generation. Um, but I. I would worry for your generation in terms of um, making sure that you, you have are able to do that virtually, but you're also able to do the people, person, face-to-face mm -hmm. -face connection too. But I, I think you'll be way better than that than I am. I've got social media, I use social media, um, but um, I, I think it offers great opportunities. And I think when we are very conscious of not flying all over the world, um, it offers great opportunities to connect with people in other places. Um, recently I saw a tweet of you um, talking about, I mean, maybe not from you, maybe from the School of Education, uh, talking about the award that you are nominated. Could you talk to me more about that? <laughs> well, yeah, that was a big surprise. So there's um, a finalists list has come out of the fifth Scottish Women's Award in 2020, for 2023 and um, I had got an email about it but I actually missed it, I, I just didn't see it in my inbox and I got a message from somebody saying, oh that's wonderful Margaret, congratulations, and I'm, for, for what? <laughs> and then she told me, really? So I, I found it, the, the list of all the nominees and I thought, oh my goodness, you think they would have told me? So anyway, I found the email. Um, so that was a was a huge surprise. Um, I am very honoured to be in the, the finals, um, regardless of what happens. Um, I, I yeah, it was a big surprise. <laughs> um, in my country, we are um, always struggling with for uh, equal rights between men and women, especially in academia. Uh, we have a gap there. Um, so maybe I, because I'm not the numbers, I know I don't know the numbers here in Scotland. But uh, do you have any special advice for a woman who are trying to um, be in academic research, or maybe well, in general, but maybe specifically in the academia, that sometimes could be a little tough for us uh, for several reasons. Yeah. Um, so maybe you have a, a thought about that. I think things are better here in Scotland. I think there are still issues. I don't think we're completely equal. Um, I think being having working with integrity as a woman, um, being sure of what you're doing and what you're saying, um, not being afraid to call something out if it's not right, and I guess that applies for men and women for that matter, um, but also being willing to challenge somebody when you think, no, wait, wait a minute here. Um, so I think um, for me it comes down to relationships again, um, being sure of yourself and being confident um, and not letting anybody put you down. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I know that, that this week will be very crazy for everybody. <laughs> so thank you very much. Well, it's been a wonderful week and I think one of my highlights of the week was actually speaking to the emerging researchers oh. on Monday morning. Oh, um, that's very nice. You, you're the future. You're important. So yes, there's things you can learn from us, but also learn what not to do. So I wish you well. Oh, thank you. Nice to meet, nice to meet you and to see you in the keynote and everything today. Thank you.